you, you represent people. Congressman, what do you think about that? Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's interesting if people reject the concept of representation, but there is no other concept. Right. Um, unless you're back to the small Greek city-state, you have to have a representative government. It's got, if, 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 hopefully it's a democratic government with a small d, uh, because otherwise, what have you got? So you have to work to representative government, and the question is, how do you make representative government work? How do you uh, eliminate or reduce the power of money, which is destroying our democratic system? Um, that, those are the relevant questions. You can't just reject democratic government because well, there's no alternative. Well, I actually think we need to open the conversation about what democracy means. And I think that's what the Occupy movements in the U.S., the movements in Greece and Spain and all over the world have been doing, is that if we have no say in our lives, we, regular people, around right. economics, war, social questions, all questions, economic, social, political, agreed. then, then but, what, what kind it, of democracy? It's a question it, it, agreed, to begin the that, question. But, but that comes back to the power of money in politics. Exactly. Um, the power of corporate, of, of corporations in politics. Let me say one other thing about that. I very much believe in countervailing power. Uh, right now you've got huge corporate power, huge corporations dominating the world, uh, dominating the country, certainly. There are only two possible centers of countervailing power uh, to, to, so that human beings can deal with that, with that power. One is government, the other is labor unions. Um, and, and you have to increase the power of both, uh, otherwise you're going to be slaves to corporations. When you, when you think about the Employee Free Choice Act and, it, and the fact that it didn't happen in, those, in, those first, in that first year, which was the window, what is your understanding of, of why, that, why it didn't happen? Well, As someone who voted for it and, <laughs> and, and thought it was very, very important and, and thinks it's one of the most important losses of the last couple of generations. Um, it didn't happen essentially because, uh, on the one hand, you had uh, the, 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 the use of the filibuster. And I hate when the press routinely reports these days that it takes 60 votes to pass something in the Senate that's anti-constitutional, anti-democratic, and, and frankly unconscionable uh, and has to be dealt with. But that's a different question. Um, but you, you had 60 Democratic votes. Three or four of them weren't really Democratic votes. Um, um, you had no Republican support whatsoever. There's no Republican support for anything to do with labor uh, or with workers' rights in the last uh, 20 years. Um, and the administration tried but uh, didn't put it, pull out all the stops, really. Uh, now, whether it could have had it pulled out all the stops is still a question. Um, and, of course, the increasing power of money in, con in congressional elections had a heck of a lot to do with that and with everything else that goes on these days. There also seems to me that there's one of the, 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 in the relationship between the Democratic Party and labor. Obviously, labor still pr uh, provides a huge chunk of Democratic votes in any but, race, right? But you, you're caught in this vicious cycle right now, which is that as union density declines, um, it's a less important constituency, and as it's a less important constituency, you start to look at other constituencies, who you can raise money from, where you can get your votes, and then you don't pursue the agenda of labor so much, and then as, because you don't pursue the agenda of labor, labor continues to can decline. I, 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 I very much want to follow that up. Parties change over time. Their constituencies change over time. Their natures change over time. The Republican Party today is an extraordinarily radical right-wing party on social issues and economic issues. The Democratic Party today is an increasingly very liberal party on social issues and a less liberal party, one could even argue semi-conservative party, on economic issues. Certainly if you take a look at film clips uh, of Hubert Humphrey or John Kennedy or Adlai Stevenson talking in the 50s, you see a rhetoric that you don't hear today. Um, and increasingly, uh, white working class voters are not, working, are not voting their economic uh, class interest, they're voting Republican. Uh, the Democratic Party is becoming a coalition of upscale, educated, socially liberal people and, and, and upper income people, and we're losing the constituency and therefore the influence within the party uh, of people sensitive to labor issues, and that's a tragedy.